Misco Electric here. Today is Sunday, June 22nd, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. This week, Nissan finally revealed the specifications for their third generation leading environmentally friendly affordable family vehicle, aka the LEAF. The compact electric crossover, which is built on the same CMF EV platform as the larger sibling, the Aria, will launch with a single motor front wheel drive configuration paired with a 75 kilowatt hour battery to deliver 214 horsepower and 261 pound feet of torque. A 52 kilowatt hour battery option offering 154 horsepower and 254 pound feet of torque will follow in the spring of 2026. The LEAF will be available in four familiar trim levels named S, S+, SV+, and Platinum+. EPA estimated range projections include 303 miles for the S+, trim, 288 miles for the SV+, trim, and 259 miles for the Platinum+, Plus, with the base S trim with the small batteries range figure not yet announced. Aerodynamic efficiency has improved due to exterior design changes, including flush mounted door handles and wheel options, achieving a drag coefficient of 0.26. The hatchback lift gate reveals a total of 55.5 cubic feet of cargo space with the second row folded down or 20 cubic feet when up. On the top two trim levels, SV Plus and Platinum Plus, the new LEAF features active battery thermal management, including a battery heater for DC fast charging preconditioning, and there's also a heat pump for greater cabin heating and cooling efficiency. The vehicle will continue to offer a pair of charging ports in the US. The first is a J1772 port on the driver's side fender, which will be designated for AC charging with a maximum of 7.2 kilowatts. A second port is North American charging system compatible, and it's only for use with DC fast charging dispensers. This port can intake a maximum of 150 kilowatts, achieving a 10 to 80% charge in 35 minutes. The new LEAF will have limited access to the Tesla supercharging network, as with all non-Tesla native NAX EVs available in the US market. I'll share a link to Tesla's interactive map in this video's description if you'd like to see the compatible station locations. Regardless, we recommend all non-Tesla native NAX EV drivers carry an adapter so that they can use CCS equipped charging dispensers in order to provide the maximum flexibility when charging in public. The new LEAF is also plug and charge compatible and supports vehicle to load, also known as V to L functionality, up to 1.5 kilowatts via adapter or the outlet in the cargo area. Vehicle to grid or V2G technology is built in, but like the previous generation and the Aria, it hasn't been enabled for customer use yet. Notable standard features on the new LEAF include wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay, and Amazon Alexa built in with optional Google built in infotainment on higher trims. Safety and convenience features include a 360 degree around view monitor and a head up display. An optional electrochromic dimming panoramic roof is available on the top trim level, the Platinum Plus, and is a segment first. The previous generation Nissan LEAF was built here in Tennessee, but the 2026 Nissan LEAF will be built in Japan alongside the Aria. First models are expected to hit dealerships this fall with pricing yet to be announced. What do you think of the new Nissan LEAF? With Tesla beginning production of their more affordable model and Chevy coming out with a new Bolt before the end of the year, the competition is about to heat up. Bring on the more affordable EVs. We typically don't report on news developments until they've been finalized, but if you've been considering buying or leasing an electric vehicle and taking advantage of the federal incentives for a new or used EV, right now might be the time. As we reported just weeks ago, when Congress passed their version of the Big Beautiful Bill, it was intended to end the federal EV tax incentives by December 31st for manufacturers which had not yet sold 200,000 EVs. Those under the 200,000 mark would have another year to claim the credit. The Senate has been making changes to this bill. 
Language currently sets the credit to expire 180 days after the new regulation comes into law for all manufacturers. More pressing is the lease loophole where EVs built outside the US can still claim the $7,500 credit. That loophole would be closed immediately. Existing Section 45X subsidies for U.S. battery and EV components manufacturing are also on the chopping block, with a complete phase-out by December 31st of 2031, including critical minerals. The phase-out would be gradual, with credits reducing incrementally starting in 2029. Credits for critical minerals are also subject to phase-out by 2031, aligning with the timeline for other components. All this to say, if you or someone you know has been considering getting into an EV and plan to take advantage of federal incentives, it may be wise to act sooner than later. LG Energy Solutions and Toyota have announced the formation of Green Metals Battery Innovations, LLC, a joint venture establishing Toyota's first dedicated facility for battery recycling in the U.S. Back in 2022, Toyota announced a partnership with leading U.S. battery recycling firm Redwood Materials, and in 2023, expanded that partnership to include sourcing cathode active material and anode copper foil from Redwood for Toyota's battery production. In 2023, they also established a partnership with another battery recycling firm in Ohio called Serba Solutions for the collection, transportation, dismantling, and processing of end-of-life lithium-ion batteries. The new facility, to be based in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, will process used batteries and scraps primarily from LG Energy Solutions U.S. operations supplying Toyota to extract valuable metals like lithium, cobalt, and nickel. These recycled materials will be reused in Toyota's EV battery production, supporting a circular economy and reducing reliance on raw material imports. The plan is expected to handle up to 13,500 tons of scrap annually, equivalent to batteries for approximately 40,000 vehicles. About 50 miles away, the Toyota Battery Manufacturing North Carolina facility has already begun production of lithium-ion batteries for Toyota's hybrid and battery electric vehicles with a capacity of over 30 gigawatt hours aimed to support up to 800,000 hybrids, 150,000 plug-in hybrids, and 300,000 battery electric vehicles annually. Toyota announced the updated BZ and new CHR EVs just a couple of weeks ago, and their luxury arm Lexus introduced an ES EV and updated RZ, but the two brands will also begin production of a three-row electric SUV in the U.S. in 2026. Toyota plans to roll out 30 all-electric models by 2030 globally. Electric flight is inching closer to reality. This week, five countries including the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, and New Zealand have announced a collaborative roadmap to streamline the certification of electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, also known as EVTOLs. Spearheaded by the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration and the Department of Transportation, alongside aviation authorities from the partner nations, this alliance aims to accelerate the safe deployment of advanced air mobility aircraft for urban air taxi services. The roadmap establishes a shared framework for type certification, ensuring safety while reducing regulatory hurdles across borders. By harmonizing standards, an eVTOL certified in one country, such as Canada, could see expedited validation in others, like the UK. Prominent eVTOL manufacturers, including Stellantis and United Airlines-backed Archer Aviation and Toyota and Delta-backed Joby Aviation, each hailed this initiative as a pivotal step towards rapid global commercialization. The agreement aligns with a recent executive order 14307 signed by the president to advanced eVTOL integration, which put into motion a plan to coordinate with federal agencies, as well as the formation of a task force for policy alignment, airspace management, and national security safeguards. As we reported last October, establishment of pilot instruction certifications and flight altitudes have already been put into place. 
companies such as Pivotal and Lyft currently conduct regular public demonstration flights in the US. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to getting airborne in an eVTOL soon. The first commercial eVTOL transportation services are expected to launch next year, pending final FAA certification. Today is the 103rd Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, featuring several EVs across various divisions. Perhaps the most anticipated competitor is Ford's Super Mustang Mach-E, driven by decorated race car driver and current king of the mountain, Roman Dumas. This tri-motor EV demonstrator, paired with a 50 kilowatt hour battery, outputs 1,421 horsepower and generates 6,900 pounds of downforce on the Pikes Peak course at speeds of 150 miles per hour. This impressive figure is made possible by the massive rear wing and front splitter. In qualifying rounds, Roman placed first in the Pikes Peak Open Division and second place overall, just one second behind the internal combustion powered leader. Will he be able to claim another record and hold his crown as king of the mountain? Evasive Motorsports, in collaboration with Hyundai, has entered a modified 2025 Hyundai Ioniq 5N in the Exhibition Division. Driven by Rob Walker, this Ioniq 5N has been optimized with a 641 horsepower powertrain and 500 pounds of weight reductions from the production spec. The team aims to break the 10-minute barrier. In the Unlimited Division, Gregory Blanchon will be racing the Bug Zappa a custom-built electric Volkswagen Bug with Tesla Model 3 performance motors and a 45 kilowatt hour battery. I'm very excited to see this one take on the mountain. If you want to tune into the race, I'll link the live stream in the description below, along with our previous coverage from Ford Performance's first entry with the Supervan 4.2 and the history of EVs at America's Mountain. Well, those are our top EV news stories for this week. If you found value in our coverage, we ask that you share this video online and be sure to subscribe so that we can continue producing this program. This week, we published our latest e-bike review featuring one of the best commuter e-bikes I've ever ridden, the Aventon Level 3. I'll include a link in the description below so you can subscribe to our Ride Reviews channel. Thank you for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.